All right, Kara and Trent are back, and I believe they have a very special guest. There she is. Give her a kiss for me. I will, I will. Thank you so much, Christine. So we're joined now, for those of you who don't know, by Cheryl Gripper, who was the architect, you could say, of the Canathon, a former executive at 11 Alive. So Cheryl, let's jump right in and just ask, what does this day mean to you, just being here now, years later, after the inception of this event? Well, 40 years ago, we didn't know what to expect, but now we do, and I'm just so excited to see the school buses, the children, the cars lined up. We even had over at the Croc Center earlier, one of the volunteers who volunteered 40 years ago who showed up today. So the fact that this is still going strong is just so great. Yeah, it's an awesome turnout, Cheryl. And what can you say about the need? Why is it still so important to collect these canned goods and non-perishables? Well, the need for the Canathon is more than it ever has been. After the pandemic, we have people who have to decide, do I need to get medicine or food? So because you're giving to the Canathon today and you still have time to keep and come on out and give, because of what you're doing, people are going to be able to pay for their gas, they're going to be able to pay for their medicine because of the Canathon. How logistically has the Canathon changed from when it started to now? Like, what are the biggest changes that you see? The biggest changes are when we started uh, 40 years ago, we had two locations, the Atlanta, the old Atlanta Fulton County Stadium and the Sears in Buckhead, which no longer exists. So now we have locations all over the county, all over the city, all over the, the state. And this is just so exciting. It is so needed. And don't the volunteers make it just a seamless process when people come up and just drive through, it's so easy to donate. Well, we want to um, we thank the volunteers. We thank Public Supermarkets, who's been with us the past 20 years. We thank Robin Steed, John DeShane, the president of, of uh, 11 Alive, for continuing this program. And the volunteers make it easy. Um, I love all of this, Cheryl, so much. Talk a little bit about maybe your personal jo journey. What's been a proud moment for you? The proud moment for me was to show up this morning at the Croc Center and see uh, Haywood Parrish, who volunteered for the Canathon 40 years ago. For him to, to realize that this was such an important part of what he does, for him to show up this morning, it was so exciting. So incredible, that. Cheryl. We can't wait to see more volunteers out here all today, more great donors. And of course, as Kara said earlier, use that hashtag I can all over social when you make donations, when you get together and really help our community. I was just saying, a lot of people, you know, we understand it's the holiday season. Everyone's getting very busy. So if you don't have time to come out today, monetary donations are always used. They're always needed and they will make the most of your donation. Um, they're also, we found out it was an Amazon wish list, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, Cheryl, I want to give you the last word. What is like the, the hope you have for the future of Canathon? Well, the future of Canathon is bright. I'm looking forward to young people taking it to a new level. Maybe there's a TikTok Canathon challenge yeah. for next year that somebody is brewing right now. I love that. Rachel, right, toss it back to Christine. Toss it back to Christine. As we Chris, TikTok Christine, Christine, yeah, take it away. We need more cans. We do. I love her. Thanks, Cheryl. Oh, my gosh. She is just incredible.